All right. Thank you to everyone who has tuned into our webinar. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy days to join our webinar about energy management. I'm your moderator, Nick Azad, and I'm joined today by two of my fellow Parsec colleagues, Corey Vodvarka, our manufacturing expert in resident lean Six Sigma Black Belt, and Penwell Chow, our software application engineer. To quickly bring you up to speed on who Parsec is, We've been in business for over 30 years with a dedicated focus exclusively on developing manufacturing operations management software, which you may hear us abbreviate MOM. Our Traxxas solution platform is designed to measurably help our customers without the need for disruption and major infrastructure overhaul. Traxxas has been deployed in thousands of locations in over 100 different countries. We've helped customers in a variety of industries food and beverage, pharmaceutical, CPG, and chemical, to name a few, to significantly improve their manufacturing operations. Today, we will focus on energy management. Now, as before, we reached out to a handful of our customers in advance of this webinar to get a gauge on common issues around energy, as well as topics of interest. To address that information, we will begin by discussing the challenges we heard follow that up with a demonstration of how Traxxas helps to solve those issues, and then end with an open Q&A session. So, Corey, my first question for you. How can someone start making energy improvements? So, many energy initiatives really begin blindly. Uh, people baseline their facilities' total usage from utility bills and they begin taking actions really just on their gut feel as to where they feel there's high consumptions and where they can make savings. They do things like replace old lighting and motors with energy efficient types. And these methods, they can be effective, but with, you know, they come along with a cost and they can be really difficult to quantify the effects of the improvement uh, without really having a data model. So the fact is, if you don't measure it, you can't improve it, just like any other metric uh, within your manufacturing operation. Mm -hmm. So submetering allows you to dig deeper into the details of your electric bill. It can provide robust information for setting baselines, benchmarking, and evaluating performance. It can assist in analytics to identify areas for improvement and troubleshooting. And it can also increase accountability for energy use within the organization. It's important to provide visibility to your utility data like water, air, gas, electric, and steam. You'll hear us refer to that as wages as we get into the demo. Visibility and actionable data ensures a continuous improvement cycle that allows the workforce to constantly see and resolve issues. It's especially important to sustain ongoing gains because improved management of energy consumption won't necessarily deliver sudden and substantial improvements. Energy management is, is more like a marathon, you know, rather than a sprint. The savings are typically measured in hour to hour and day to day increments. That makes sense. So how can companies benefit from smart manufacturing and a unified MOM system like Traxxas uh, as part of their energy management strategy? So MOM addresses four major functions of manufacturing, production, quality, inventory, and maintenance. All of these can really have a profound impact on energy consumption. Taking an MOM approach also provides a comprehensive production data model the data included in this model makes it possible to turn what typically you see raw energy data into energy intelligence. This allows you to identify root causes and really start addressing things in your improvement strategies. The contextualized energy data can allow you to determine what typical energy consumption is for different products, equipment, value streams, and different production activities. Establishing and displaying targets helps manage the budgets and more quickly identify abnormalities. Automatic notifications can help escalate urgent issues so they can be timely investigated as well as resolved. 
So your strategy should really begin helping identify context for the issues that you identify. You should be able to ask questions or answer questions like, when and why did a machine exceed its typical energy draw? Or why did an equipment changeover cause startup surges? And why did a component change extend the production run into a peak rate period versus an off-peak rate period? So with that, how can energy data be used to make commercial decisions? So most companies currently track the material and labor that go into a product, rolling those components into a cost of goods sold figure. An energy component could also be introduced into cost of goods sold as well as be included on bill of materials or recipe lists for process industries. Many companies use cost accounting and that cost accounting is limited to just utility bills. So their approach is take the utility, the average utility cost and equally spread it across all of the products that were made during that, that billing period. So the fact is if you produce different types of products, they require different production activities as well as energy consumption to produce those different products. With this accounting model, some products will have gains and some will have losses versus the standard. So what happens if your demand shifts? This could have a really negative impact on the profitability of the organization. So by creating a reporting model that evaluates the energy, energy data across value streams, allows organizations to know the true energy cost of individual products and the production work order runs. This provides greater confidence in cost accounting and ensuring profitability of each of your individual products. This information can then be used in determining selling price and preserving margin or being competitively priced out in the marketplace. Excellent. So the last question that I have then, what would you say are some strategies for making ongoing energy improvements? So I mentioned many companies that don't have data, they typically take the approach of energy audits. These energy audits, many of the recommendations are really focused on installing the latest, greatest energy efficient equipment. Things like investing in new light bulbs or ballasts, investing in solar panels, applying VFDs and efficient motors to your equipment, installing rainwater collection basins for reuse of, of rainwater versus city water. So things like these, they do have long-term benefits, but can really have a significant investment up front. So other options exist. There's many different activities that can have a really profound impact without the significant investment, really focused on, on manufacturing practices. Some examples, using energy data to determine which machines and their associated products require the most energy to run. If possible, you can modify your production schedules to produce energy intensive products outside of your peak rate hours. Another option would be using OEE data to reduce equipment down, downtime and, sharks and short stops. It not only improves productivity, but it reduces energy, expi energy spikes experienced during frequent equipment restarts as well as wasted energy running equipment to produce poor quality or no production at all. The last one would be an effective equipment maintenance program. Things like conducting regular cleaning, lubrication, and inspection, these allow your equipment to keep operating in tip-top shape. This can have a really significant impact on, on energy. One other point is digitizing can also reduce uh, carbon footprint by eliminating paper on the shop floor. So before we jump into the demonstration, I want to start with a little background on the architecture of the Traxxas MOM platform. Traxxas uses a real-time logic service to communicate with automation on the plant floor and a data management service to communicate with third-party business systems like ERP, maintenance systems and quality systems. 
This enables Traxxas to empower its users to execute tasks and workflows across the value stream while providing actionable intelligence to its users. Traxxas can be accessed through a web browser interface. This allows users to interact with user interfaces and further contextualize the data as they carry out manufacturing and business processes. As I mentioned, Traxxas can be accessed through any web interface. Since it's built on HTML5, it's responsive to a variety of mobile devices. By enabling mobility, it allows executives, managers, and operators to be provided the visibility, knowledge, and control they need to achieve their operational goals. I now want to turn things over to Penwell. He's going to be taking us through a live demonstration on how Traxxas can be used for providing energy intelligence as a part of your sustainability objectives. Thank you, Corey. It's a great conversation. So first off, we are going to be heading into Orange County Vitamin. This is our fictitious plant that is based on real implementations. To kick things off, I'm going to be heading into our utility section up at the top. For those who are familiar, this is meant to mimic a lot of the same processes that you've been seeing in other previous webinars or for those who are familiar with the demo in general. We got sections like batching, tableting, packaging, and the warehouse. However, of course, this is all about utility management and wages. As Corey mentioned earlier, wages are water, air, gas, electricity, and steam. However, these are only some of the utilities that might be found on the plant floor. Every implementation is different. This is just how we chose to utilize it. So what does this screen exactly tell us? gives us live information on how much we have used. So I have 175 gallons used in my batching for water, as well as predefined caps. As you can see, this is all color coded for visual management, as well as when we're getting a little bit cl too close to our cat, we can see that we're getting this sort of amber color. And maybe when we're going over, we have this red color. Just a quick snapshot of what's going on overall in our plant, showing all the different sections, as well as caps and live information. Let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper. I'm going to go ahead and here and click on our, our water section. This screen also gives us a wealth of information for our batching section specifically. You can see the utilities here are water, air, gas, electricity, and steam. But it gives us monetary information such as how much that we've spent for the day. So if you want to have pre-configured limits on maybe how much your water costs, Traxxas is easily capable of processing all that information in real time, as well as your current month and then year to date as well. So you can see, once again, we have visual management play in here, showing that this is orange hair. As we can see, we are also tracking daily trends. So each of these intervals specifically are every five minutes. Of course, that is up to you. You can choose the intervals however you want. However, you can see, we also have predefined limits on what we have deemed this is what we should be using for this amount of time. As you can see, we are getting a little bit close here, and then as well as here, we are going over our limit. Since, as you can see, we are going over our limit for air, as you can see, it is amber, whereas gas, electricity, and steam, we're a little bit close, but we're not too bad over here. Lastly, on the right-hand side, you can see daily values as well. If I hover over one of these charts, we can see hourly 18.42 gallons with a total of about 175 gallons used. Once again, we are using special parts to signify caps on what we predefine as how much we should be using. So this screen gives us a great look at monetary as well as live information on how we're doing and what we should be reaching and if we're pretty much going through our goals. What I've been showing you here are all live information. Maybe you are connecting to one of your machines, which can actually tell you your utility management or how much you've been using. However, this is not always the case. If you look in the top right, we have a notification, a little one and a bell. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And once the screen loads up and shows our notification, 
We can see that it is time for us to record electricity meters in batching. These notifications can be set up at any time, whether you want it to come through a new shift, whether you want it to come on a new job, or every hour or so. In this scenario, we are saying we are going to put in a meter entry form. So earlier, all that was mostly automated data. Of course, that is not always the case for your specific implementation. Say in your factory, you are using a meter entry form. This is telling you, all right, it's time for the user to actually go ahead and look at the meter and put in how much uh, the usage. If you look also closely here, there is a uh, link that you can also click on. So these notifications can either create entities for you in Traxxas or as well as hyperlinking you to a different section. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this meter entry form. This is a manual utility input. So anytime I can go ahead and click on utilities here, maybe click on my water. And then operator here can go ahead. As Corey mentioned earlier, this is HTML5. So if an operator is on his iPad, they can walk over to the actual meter and click on the reading. Say the reading also tells me that it is currently, uh, let's just say 418. Permanent information such as the current time, as well as the user you're on, as well as the previous record showing the time last that it was inputted, and then the previous readout. Since the previous readout is 321 and my gallons is currently 418, I click on save. This page will actually update and not only give you the readout now, but also it will be able to do the algorithm for the quantity as well. This will help eliminate user input. So, on the topic of notifications, I'm going to go ahead and head back into our original wages section, and I'm going to click on this overload button. What this overload button will do is it will choose one of these tiles and automatically update one to go over the specified limit. Clicking on overload here, as you can see our air reached over this cap. Once again, I have created another notification. So what we wanna show you here is how dynamically in real time I can go ahead and anytime one of those updates goes over that hard limit we set, we can go ahead and create an alert for it. In this scenario, we're seeing since my air meter went too high, now it's saying I have excessive air usage on vessel one. What I'm going to show you now is the general work orders and how what Corey was saying earlier, maintenance plays a huge part in keeping your utilities up and efficient. So as you can see here, I have a link called navigate to the work order. If I click on work order here, Traxxas has already created a task for me, filled out a lot of information, such as compressed air system, as well as even giving me notes such as excessive air usage on vessel one. Let's go ahead and walk through the process. So say I'm an operator and I've seen that the notification went over. I've gone ahead and clicked on it and now I can see my maintenance request. As an operator, I'm going to click on Submit Request. Once I've submitted it, Traxxas is a full MOM platform, and as well, I can even tie in shifts for such as equipment, as you can see here, my current job running, as well as work orders. Maybe this is a supervisor screen. My supervisor can see here and say, okay, after 7.15, we have a lot of time to actually do this information. So I'm gonna go ahead in here and just put 7.30 p.m. And we'll, let's just say, I want this done by 8 p.m. Supervisor can then go ahead and schedule it. Once I've scheduled this, Traxxas can go look at different maintenance operators. So these are the maintenance operators, and I can see that all of these people have potential slots that I can put in. If I click on Benjamin here, I have assigned that specific task to Benjamin, as well as created a notification. I would also like to take a brief moment and note that these screens could be specific to an operator. So say I am the maintenance worker and I'm going to go over here and click on my technician report. Logging in as Benjamin, the one I just selected, I can see that maintenance request. However, on the left-hand side, you can see I still have all those supervisor reports, technician reports, workflows, all this stuff can completely be customized depending on who is actually looking at the screen. So of course, maybe when Benjamin logs in, he only sees the specific technician report, allowing the workflow so the supervisor can see what he needs to see. And then of course, operators may not be able to access information you do not want them to be able to access. Moving on, let's just say I am Benjamin. I'm going to click on this maintenance request. And I can see here 
that my compressed air system is the machine affected, as well as the notes showing that the excessive air usage on vessel one. Also, Traxxas is capable of storing a wealth of information, including instructions, even PDFs for attachments, making sure that they are doing the correct operations. Let's just say I am Benjamin and I have completed the task. I'm just going to write an extra note saying that I repaired leak on the actuating valve. As Benjamin, I've completed the task. I can click on submit for review. And this is something a supervisor report may be able to see. So now maybe I'm a supervisor. I've logged in and I've seen that the maintenance request has been done and I need to go ahead and approve it. Clicking on this, I can go ahead here and say, notes completed, something of the sort, and I can go ahead and review and close. Of course, Traxxas is fully capable of having a wealth of tools for you to use for validation. So whether you want to do sign-offs, whether you want to have automatically people logged in or making sure that your workflow is correct for verification. Review and close, and that is how we can show maybe a work order to make sure that something on your utility line is going correctly. Staying on the train of tasking in general, I want to talk a little bit about autonomous maintenance. As Corey was saying earlier, you always want to make sure your products or your machines in general are always clean. This helps you out with your utilities in general. Autonomous maintenance is the idea of usually having simpler or narrowed down tasks for maybe a specific op operator. So these are kind of maintenance requirements that operators use, maybe instead of a work, uh, instead of a maintenance worker. This is kind of a supervisor screen showing maybe scheduled tasks. And here we have a bunch of cleaning tasks, making sure that maybe at the end of the shift that your front plexi door was cleaned or the exit door was cleaned as well. I can go as a supervisor in here, click on edit, and Traxxas also provides parts for such as a texting, text inputs, such as a drop down, maybe I want to show what kind of method I want to clean it with, as well as tools, times, time plots, intervals, all this stuff, a supervisor can make sure that the task is correct. Anytime, the supervisor can also trigger these tasks, and as well, the operator who is currently working on the line can have these tasks, as well as sign offs as well. <clears throat> I'm going to head back into our utility section now, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about more of the cost benefits that you might be able to use within Traxxas. We are going to head into our utility calculator. What the utility calculator is, is a tool that we've used completely based off of Traxxas parts in order to maybe tackle some of your future problems, such as when you know your rates for your water are going to go higher, and you want to see maybe how that will affect how much you're spending as well as being able to do what Corey was talking about earlier, checking if you want to schedule maybe production during peak and off-peak hours. To demonstrate this, I'm going to click on utility. This is just looking at water, see we have a single rate here, but we're going to go into electricity, which is a much more common theme as they have peak and off-peak hours. The time here and start date allows you to choose maybe a selected number of jobs that I've already pre-configured, and I'm just going to put in a large amount of kilowatt hours so we can demonstrate it a little bit better. Distribution type basically means the quantity that we're going to distribute across either production count. So production count is maybe we're creating Agile, a product, and we're creating 195 bottles. We're going to be distributing it across the different amount of counts. Flat is across each job, and then production time would be across what we have decided the amount of time it will take for one product. A little complicated, but once I actually click on this and show you the chart, it'll be easier to understand. Down here we have our rates. So I can see we have a peak, we have an off peak. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to be putting in 0 0.09, which is our off, or which is our peak hours, and click on calculate. As you can see, Traxxas has already come up with the graph, as well as dollar amounts showing this specific run of our product here, which produces 263 units, took 410 kilowatt hours with the price of $36.90. Of course, all these numbers are just fictitious. We're just showing so you can get a good representation. I can go down the line and see how much it cost me, as well as any time go over and change my rate as well. So if I plugged in that off-peak hours now and clicked on update, we can see that the changes are instantly made. 
This way, maybe a planner can go ahead and decide, okay, I have a new water rate coming up. I want to change that. Or I want to see how much it would be cheaper running my job during off-peak hours. <clears throat> All right. Lastly, I'm going to be heading back in here, and we're going to be looking at our jobs, or our reports. So let's head into energy by job. Those who are familiar with Traxxas have probably seen this a couple times. Pretty easy to make. We have filters here detailing start date, end time, as well as even drilling down to specific products. So I can go ahead in here and click on Attribute 200, and we are looking at products with our energy consumption. I click on Agile 200, this chart updates to exactly only the runs that had Agile 200. We're going to go ahead here and open up two tabs really quickly. And this is where Corey was talking about how OEE and then breaking it all back down, maintenance will eventually affect your utility usage as well. This is just simple event breakdowns, meaning usually downtimes that happened on our line. As you can see here, we had a changeover at this specific moment, or maybe no labels here as well as a break during here. If you notice carefully, anytime we have these downtimes, we have a drop in our utilities, meaning that's kind of expected. However, we go to our other chart, sometimes we can even see that we had a drop down here for our utilities. However, there were no actual events that broke, break, broke down. We can take these charts, look at them a little bit, compare them, and sometimes we can see maybe we are using our utilities a little bit inefficiently and be able to draw monetary reasons for that. On the left-hand side, we have totals here. So you can see for this specific run of Agile 200, we had total kilowatts used at 69.22, as well as a monetary price for $4.85. And I think another interesting point to, to point out here is, while the line is down, you're actually still consuming electricity on the other portions of the line that might still be operating, you know, consuming air, electricity, so forth, to maintain pieces of equipment on that aren't actually running or producing any kind of materials. That is a great point, Corey. And lastly, I'm going to be heading into our last report, Comparisons by Day. Charlie, you see here, helps hits write a lot of the data that we have been capturing throughout. So in the background here, you can see this little yellowish chart, and then we had the blue one. Blue one would be for yesterday, giving us monetary that we spent $387.26, as well as currently we are spending $139.90. This allows for that whole golden batch comparison. So for batching, instead we're going to be using a utilization of money and utilities. Anytime I can change the date or even change the different areas, see how I'm currently doing. I can also change the utilities to let me know in this scenario, I am pretty much over and I'm getting over a little bit too much. And I can go ahead and in real time make that change, maybe turn it down a little bit. Or if I want to do maybe do maintenance, making sure that I am running efficiently. On the left-hand side, once again, we have daily values denoting how long it's taking. And that about does it for our demonstration today. Thanks, Penwell, for walking us through the demonstration. Uh, I think some of the things that were pretty interesting, the, the visual management, energy is one of those things that uh, is a bit of a mystery to people, like how much energy should you be consuming? So that, that contextualization of what is normal and what's not normal, being able to, to see that quickly, uh, you know, it makes you effective without having to be an expert on energy and utilities. So we've seen a, a few different ways that Traxxas can connect to a variety of data sources as well, collect manual data, and allow you to seamlessly capture energy intelligence. Traxxas is a unified MOM platform capable of delivering a variety of solutions that create a connected data flow and integrated view across the enterprise. So with that, we're going to jump into the Q&A portion of the webinar. Feel free to enter your questions in the GoToMeeting console on the right. If there's any questions we don't get to, we'll be sure to make answers uh, available to everybody, along with the recording of the webinar following this webinar. So first question I have is, can Traxxas provide maintenance requests to my existing computerized maintenance management system? 
That's a good question. I'll I'll, I'll take that. And uh, yes, you'll. We we kind of briefly went over the the maintenance workflow of how we can manage work orders from requests to scheduling to assignment uh, on to completion. Um, oftentimes we're we're asked to um, you know maybe do portions of that workflow within Traxxas, like accept the request on the plant floor because operators may not always have access to the CMMS system. So we're able to accept those requests and actually send those into the CMMS system. Or in other scenarios, maybe the scheduling or reporting within your CMMS is, is less to be desired. So we can also follow, uh, you know, support uh, improving some of those processes. So Traxxas works really well with a variety of different softwares and and it's able to fill gaps. You don't necessarily need to rip and replace everything you have if there's pieces of it that's working well. But uh, if there's pieces that need to be enhanced, we can certainly help uh, by integrating into that. So the next question is, where does the system get its costing information in real time? For example, electricity rates might vary by time or day based on current usage value. Where is the dollar conversion coming from? So that's a great question too. There's there's a few different things depending on uh, what data you have to connect to. Um, you know, there's smart meters as well as applications from uh, the utility companies that can provide both the the usage and the existing rate because the rates do in fact fluctuate. Um, so we're able to connect to those other systems and, and draw that information on the consumption and the, the fluctuating rates. For other folks that maybe the rates don't fluctuate on, on a real-time basis, uh, maybe they're on more of a time, or time of use, we're able to create data tables where we can, we can set in those rates based upon the times and then the system based upon the time uses, uses the correct rate uh, as well uh, throughout the day, as well throughout seasons, uh, rates may change. So there's a few different options there on, on how you want to go about uh, collecting those rates. The next question is, does the solution convert the various energy types into one common energy type, unit of measure for reports? For example, energy by job showing one energy type only uh, have the others all been rolled up? You want to take that pen well and talk about uh, how we can manage units up? I'll, I'll take it. Um, so units of measure, um, we there are tables within the system to uh, to normalize units of measure. Maybe you have a meter that is providing information in liters and another meter that's pro providing in gallons. Um, those tag values that we're collecting that information from, we can define what they're currently collecting, and then uh, there's unit conversions to, to normalize those. Hopefully that answers the question. Uh, the next question is, can I integrate into my existing data historian to provide additional contextualized data with Traxxas? Um, so yeah, there's just like just like with maintenance, there's a variety of, uh, you know, we have several different customers that maybe they already had an existing historian and it's just not providing them the right type of context. Um, maybe it's just kind of raw data. Sometimes that's really difficult without additional information to be able to really pinpoint the root causes. So context is important. So. If you have an existing data historian, sometimes uh, we can we can use that as like our OPC signals and reutilize those tags. Um, so there's a lot of applications where we've integrated to existing data historians. The next question is, would you consider energy management a form of predictive maintenance? Um, I, I would definitely say yes. Energy, uh, you know, the the way equipment performs, good or bad, when equipment's running really well, it typically gets into a steady state and uses less energy. 
when things begin to uh, start wearing down, it's less efficient and starts consuming more energy. Uh, I, I could use some examples of, of motors as they start wearing down if they're not lubricated, um, you know, start heating up, consuming more energy as a result. Uh, things like furnaces and, and burner systems, if you're not uh, doing regular maintenance and cleaning your burner systems or they're not tuned properly, you'll definitely consume a whole lot more uh, gas within those. Um, another example of, of uh, furnace systems is maybe your refractory is, is not in good condition and as a result not insulating the, the heat properly. So it begins uh, passing more heat through the, the refractories and consuming more energy. So it's a great predictor uh, of, of energy as long as you get down to uh, isolating those, those data values to the piece of equipment. It can be definitely be used for predicting conditions and predicting failures. So the last question I have up here is, how is consumption of energy data sourced into Traxxas and at what granularity? So earlier on the screen, um, in the demonstration you were we were showing, <clears throat> A lot of the times it depends on your implementation. So, for example, we were showing that manual input. It's pretty much whether an operator is actually going to look at the equipment that you really have and maybe looking at a meter. Traxxas has the capability of easily grabbing the quantity that was already used as well as just the operator putting in that meter. Or, I mean, sometimes people only have maybe they're just their bill alone. That's all they're using. They grab that bill. We can easily historize that data as well. So you can easily create screens to grab that information. Or if you already have that, like Corey was saying earlier, maybe in a data historian, well, we are capable of easily connecting to other systems. So if you wanted to grab uh, maybe in the, from a historian, put that in there as well. And lastly, if you do maybe have a more uh, smart device way of approaching it, you have a lot of that information already on your your line already. So say your machine actually reports that information, whether through like PLC or something like that, we can actually grab that information and put that in with Traxxas as well. So there pretty much are a wealth of ways of grabbing that kind of information. It's mostly just however dependent uh, your current implementation is being done, and then we can just connect to it. Well, thank you, gentlemen, and thank you to <coughs> everyone who wrote in. We're going to wrap things up. Uh, we appreciate your time. As a reminder, the answers to all the questions we received will be emailed out to you. For anything else, please feel free to contact us at the email address on screen, and you can also always find out more about our platform, Traxxas, on our website, www.parsec-corp.com forward slash Traxxas. Till next time, thanks again.